Hey everyone, welcome to the Ready for History channel, and I'm Rhett, for all you people that think that I'm an AI voice and someone that's fake. I am in a different room rather than a recording studio, so there might be sort of an echo on here, but if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. Thought I'd show my face because it's been a while on this channel. Do a lot of content, but never show my face anymore. I'm going to try to change that a little bit on this channel. I do have another channel called History Happens, and then I'm going to be going and doing some of the older content like what I did. Older style, I guess I should say. But I love all things old, whether it's history, graves, cemetery, historical locations, historical items, history items, nostalgic items, whatever it is. I do love it, and I wanted to do something different today because I've got a ton of old things that I never showcase on the channel. I'm a weirdo, I guess I collect that kind of stuff, but I thought I would go through this paper that I acquired from a family member. And this is a Sunday Oklahoma paper. So typical Sunday paper that you might see all over the US. And I thought we would go through it together. It is from 1989. And uh, just kind of a fun look in the past, something kind of different go through, maybe see what was happening, or more importantly, let's get to the ads and see what the prices of things were, or just crazy items that they've got in there that we used to think uh, was the greatest thing ever, and now it's just something in the past and very nostalgic. So stay tuned, and let's go through this paper together. Okay, here is the paper. It's the Sunday Oklahoman from Sunday, April 16th, 1989. Check out this price, it was only a dollar. You cannot get a Sunday paper for that price anymore. And this is sort of a special Sunday paper because it's celebrating the centennial uh, date of 1889 and the land run that happened here in Oklahoma. And they're showcasing an old camera here. When this happened, and it kind of mentions it here, the run didn't need TV to be a media event. This was a huge event outside of the Civil War there were all sorts of photographers here, and you can look online and see some very famous photos of the land opening up and everybody rushing to get their land, their little stake, their claims and stuff. And there were cities and towns that literally sprouted up overnight. So this is kind of a commemorative paper from that era. Uh, the land run actually happened on April 22nd, 1889, and this is from April 16th, 1989. So the following weekend, there were all sorts of events in different towns and cities. I happened to be on that following Saturday in Guthrie, Oklahoma, because they had a huge event there. And there were Native Americans there, African Americans, uh, whites, you name it, all sorts of cultures coming out to celebrate the territory's history because Oklahoma didn't become a state till 1907. But I, you're going to see a lot of that in here. We're not going to go over that particular part. I thought I would just kind of point out some of the things that are interesting in here, particularly with what we maybe see in a typical Sunday paper and not so much this centennial stuff. But it is kind of interesting to see uh, that this British stadium crush kills 93 and the relative that we acquired this for, we don't. I don't, we'd have to Google this. Maybe one of you can Google it and put the answer below, but they've marked it out and put 94. Unfortunately, we can't ask that family member anymore. Um, sadly, they've passed, but it's a cool thing here. We can see the weather. Back, back when you tuned into the paper uh, for a prayer for today, uh, just, you know, how many papers were circulated last Sunday? 337,000 over that papers. I don't think hardly anybody gets this anymore. I don't see, I don't get it, and neither do any of my neighbors get a paper delivered to their house. I know that there's people that probably still do or go buy one, but it's just so rare. And the papers are not this thick anymore. And, you know, the thickest papers I remember are the ones right after Thanksgiving that had all the ads for everyone. And those were my favorite to go through even if I didn't get out on Black Friday and go shopping, I still love to look at the ads. But yeah, people would tune in and, and get their weather, uh, weather for the week, and that's how the paper was. We didn't have cell phones. So as we open this up, I thought, here, here we go, weather right there. I have no idea what's in this paper. I haven't went through it before, 
This is Dillard's advertising uh, baby stuff. So here's a Graco Strolla bed, $69. Uh, just all kinds of old items in there. And I thought we could thumb through the pages and just see what we have. Maybe like some old stores that are no longer around is kind of what I'm looking for. Because that stuff, it, oh, right here, we're sorry. Do you guys remember Venture? Did you have Venture where you were at? So this says, this week's white cell circular, they advertised an Emerson compact microwave for $68.88, $68.88. And then the manufacturer was unable to ship it, so there will be no rain checks issued. Who does rain checks anymore? Are rain checks even a thing? And then look here, we have uh, some old artists. It's country music artists. And uh, this is a show somewhere. It, well, a Lazy E Arena. It's a, kind of a Western cowboy Lazy E Arena in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And they, like I said, they really turned out for this event. But this is going on into May, a centennial celebration. Conway Twitty, Minnie Pearl, I know they're gone. And someone's gonna have to help me out on this Gary Morris. I don't, I'm not even sure what they sing, but I definitely know these two. So yeah, pretty interesting. That's the first one. We're gonna mess this paper up just going through this. But like I said, here's the weather. You can even get the weather in other cities in case you were traveling on the airport, in the airplane somewhere. And of course, you have all the obituaries in here. Um, old ads. That's what I love. I love looking at old ads and things like that. This is an old Homeland. I don't know if you guys have Homeland where you're at, but Homeland is pretty well an Oklahoma store. But I know I've seen them in other places. So here is the 89 Centennial Week and what was going on in each little city across the state. Like I said, it was a big deal. And uh, then you've got some different people, jewelers like B.C. Clark, which I've done a video on. They have a very memorable jingle for anyone here in Oklahoma. So I've, I've done a video doing some of the history on that. But we're not going to go through this. Like I said, here's some sports. Uh, Barry Sanders played for OSU. If you were a, a NFL fan back in the day, he went on to play for the Detroit Lions. Uh, heck of a football player. So crazy to see stuff like that. So that that's the sports, at least here in Oklahoma, what was making the news. Um, and then this is talking about uh, 89ers, which was a minor league baseball team that we used to have here. No longer around. In fact, the stadium is long gone. This is business. Who who really wants to look at business? Uh, not really. Not that exciting. Maybe it is to some of you guys, but here's real estate classified. So we could maybe put this aside and look and see maybe what a uh, price of a house is, at least in the paper. Here's some jobs that you could look up and see what maybe they're they're looking for. I mean, classifieds for jobs. Can you imagine? People don't even look in the paper for jobs anymore. Um, this is more to do with the land run. That's what a lot of this paper is. Probably thicker than normal, I would say, for April uh, back then. So we'll put that aside. I'm, and I'm sure that there's some cool ads in here um, throughout the paper from different um, stores and places of business that are no longer around. This is what our skyline used to look like. If you watch any of the Thunder basketball games, we have a huge tower there. It's called the Devon Tower. And so it, the skyline has changed. There's different buildings there and it, it's there's plans to make it even more so than what it was. But here is something. This is kind of what I wanted to get to, the bread and butter. As we get to this part, coupons. Do you remember coupons? There was always that one lady in the store that had this huge book of coupons and she was going to write a check and she couldn't write fast. And all you had to do was get this little bag of grapes. And if she didn't hurry with all her coupons, your grapes were going to turn into raisins. But look at this. This is advertising VHS cassette tapes, uh, color film for your 35 millimeter camera and batteries for your camera. 
I mean, save 25 cents off of Kodak batteries. I cannot tell you the last time that I've saw Kodak batteries, but these are old coupons. I don't know if there's any products that are no longer around. If you guys see anything or know of something like, hey, that's gone now, let me know. Because I really have no idea. I mean, here they're offering a free road atlas with the purchase of headlights. No one uses a road atlas anymore. We're all on GPS, especially on our phones. Um, crazy. You know, they would offer things in here like this is a jigsaw out of your favorite photo. I know you can still get stuff like that, but no one really prints off photos hardly anymore. We all just keep them on our phones or computers or something like that. Kellogg shredded wheat squares, raisin. I don't even know about this. I mean, I'm sure I saw it back in the day. I just don't remember it. But this coupon expires July 9th, 1989. So this must have been new at the time because it says free box right there. But is it still around? Let me know. Let me know in the comments there. We got all kinds of stuff. I remember a lot of Special K commercials. They would come on during uh, kids shows, all sorts of evening shows, everything. So we got Kinder Care, Minute Maid. Kinder Care is a daycare if that's not where you're at. Typical coupons though, 75 cents, 15 cents. 15 cents wouldn't hardly get you anything. You could probably look underneath your car seat and find more if you're actually one of those ones that pays with change and then you kind of just throw it to the side because what are you going to use it for nowadays? There's a lot of vending machines that don't even take cash or coins anymore. It's just card only. But yeah, 50 cents off. Oh, look here. Here's Kentucky Fried Chicken. You could get a three-piece meal for $3.29. Or a uh, Oklahoma Square Deal only. Two pieces of chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, biscuit, and a 32-ounce drink in a Land Run cup. For $2.99. Pretty crazy. 10 piece family meal, $10.99. Shoot, that meal right there, the three piece meal is probably gonna be $10.99 now. 15 piece chicken, $10.99. And in the iconic buckets. I mean, that's just crazy to think about. A lot of this stuff just cheap. 20, 20 cents off coupons. It would have been a big deal in 1989. 25 cents, 30 cents, 50 cents would have been a big one. And, you know, the, the store that I was pointing out earlier, Homeland, in the 80s and 90s, they used to do double and sometimes triple coupons. So if you had something that was 25 cents, they had a certain day of the week, and that would turn into 50 cents and sometimes 75 cents. So if you had these big coupons that were 50 cents, you wanted to save your coupons for double coupon day. Oh, look at this. Cigarettes, Newport striped cigarettes. You could get a free pack of regular or menthol and you could save $2 by mail, mailing this in. That's just a, uh, look at, we were doing selfies in the 80s people right here. We didn't need a cell phone. Look at that Polaroid camera. They're doing a selfie. There's proof. We invented it back in the 80s, I guess. Probably even before that. Now this is something that we all looked forward to because uh, maybe you had the TV guide if you had cable you had the TV guide channel by this time in 1989 but this was the thing that you planned out because the TV guide might show you what was coming on that day or possibly the next day this thing right here this is just the not the actual TV guide that you would buy in the grocery store this is what would come in every paper this was like this in Oklahoma and Texas I know had a bunch of family in Texas so it it did have a little bit about different shows. It had advertisements in it. Um, but where you wanted to get to, well, what was on at all times. So you could plan your week. This was the whole week's worth of, of television shows. So yes, you had a VCR and you could maybe record it, but you had to know when it was coming on so you could set your VCR. So these are television shows that were on in April of 1989, and what a what a flashback that is. Sunday evening cable, probably the good stuff was coming on on uh, 
Friday night like this right here, and it would tell what was coming on HBO if you're one of those ones lucky enough to have HBO. We had it at times and then got rid of it at times, but for the most part, once the VCR kind of came on strong, we, we pretty well dumped like HBO or we never had Showtime or Cinemax, but I, I know you can still get those, but this would tell you everything on TMC, um, Nickelodeon, BET, C-SPAN, Discovery Channel, and then your local channels, um, ESPN, everything. So if you wanted to watch the Basketball Championship Series, it would start at 2.30 on Friday, 2.30 p.m. But yeah, what a blast from the past this is to see an old TV guide. Uh, now we can just kind of look on our... Uh, television and there's a built-in guide with it rather than a TV guide channel or something but and then, and then if you saw a movie you could go back here and kind of just see what it was rated by a critic um, I don't know if this was Associated Press critic or Daily Oklahoma critic but they would rate this tell the year that it came out and what it was about who was in it and what channel it was on like this The Big Trees 1952 Adventure with Kirk Douglas and Eve Miller and it came on TBS on Saturday at 2 p.m. So then you could flip back through, set your VCR reminder if you weren't going to be home because you were at work or whatever. Look at the back of this, these old camcorders. Crazy, crazy, crazy. These big old things right here, I'm recording on a cell phone, but can you imagine? I would have had to have this thing over my shoulder recording this thing, and they were not steady whatsoever. But yeah, VCR repair... It's just crazy. So this is more stuff right here on, uh, this is on the Daily Oklahoman actually. Uh, Oklahoma Publishing Company. So they're opening some plant, I guess, new plant. So here, here's Homeland again. Boy, they went big in this paper. They've got their own ad. Ribeyes, $3.88. How about milk? Half gallon of milk for 89 cents. Or we have Mrs. Wright's. I don't even remember. I don't even remember the brand Mrs. Wright's. But this is three for a dollar. 16 ounce loaves. Three for a dollar. And we have ice cream. A dollar off a half gallon. This is a big old centennial sale that they were having. We got a can of biscuits for 69 cents. Maxwell House coffee for a dollar 99. Um... <laughs> Here is mineral water in the bottle. Maybe some of you guys drank it, but I used to think that was the craziest thing in the 80s and 90s. I'm like, why would you buy bottled water? You can just pull out a hose anywhere. You can drink from a water fountain, drink from the faucet. I didn't understand paying for water at all. And and now I've been guilty of buying a bottle of water here and there because I, I don't feel like we have the water fountains that we once used to have. But yeah, there's... a. Uh, we got grapefruit juice in a can over here, and ramen noodles, seven for a dollar. I really don't know what the price of those are. I used to eat a lot of those back in the day, especially in the military. It was cheap. Those pinching pennies in the military. But yeah, we got surf detergent, $1.99, mail-in rebate, and then the detergent is going to be free. Uh crazy you could get a whole big old 12 ounce package of cookies for 79 cents big old pound of bacon 78 cents about rib steaks 368 a pound it's just kind of crazy to to flip through this bath tissue 59 cents for a four pack of bath tissue velvet I don't know if that was like John Wayne paper, you know, the stuff that's like rough and tough and doesn't take off poop from anybody, but I don't know. Here's some broccoli for 59 cents, lettuce, 39 cents each. It's crazy how much stuff has changed. More stuff telling about um, just what's happened in Oklahoma over the years. Here's an early stage. This is Oklahoma City. Like I said, we're not going to spend too much time on that. More about the people. Let's see who's on this, though. Just curious. Oh, I thought maybe they'd have the names. They do not. Because 
in the old days of this channel, I used to cover a lot of some of the pioneers of Oklahoma, whether they were lawmen or outlaws. Here's a venture ad. Venture, yeah, so some of that is over here on the left is actually some different pioneer people. And, uh, but here's a, this is more interesting right now to me. This venture ad where you could get slip on canvas casuals for $3.99, Wrangler jeans for $9.99, um, Tide detergent $5.49, a curling iron from Vidal Sassoon, name brand back then, $4.99. Shampoo, flex shampoo for nine, 99 cents each. And then uh, this was a big store in Oklahoma. I've also done a story on this back in the day because it has a special memory with me and me getting my first pair of shoes. But Anthony's was a big local store here. But they also ventured out as far as far away as California. They had a few stores out there. But, you know, they their uh, first store, 1922, and they are long gone now. No longer around. We got some old cars right here. They're advertising Buick and all the different things like Skylark and Riviera, Century. Crazy to see stuff like that. They're all real square, typical 80s boxy cars that were small. Trying to, trying to get more gas mileage. We got Centennial Savings from Fowler Toyota. What can you get a truck for? This is a 1989. New, new Toyota pickup, 4x4 pickup for $10,995. You could get an 89 Celica for $11,995. Um, how about a new 89 Jeep Cherokee for $15,995? That would have been nice. Crazy, a Camry for $11,995. Even a Super for $19,995. That would have been expensive back then. At least for me. Pet Boys. I think we maybe have one Pet Boys left. I don't, I don't really know if that was a nationwide thing or not. But we had several locations here in the Oklahoma City area. Lots of old pictures from the land run time period. Look at these old cars. These are more of those Journal Motors cars. The old... Oldsmobile Cutlass right there. Buick Century, Pontiac 6000. Probably the old, all the same platform, just the different versions, whether it's Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, Buick, Pontiac. They're all the same platform. More memories of the Land Run. We're going to kind of skip over that. Eckerd Drugs. Eckerd Drugs. Do you guys remember those? These were all over the place, at least here in Oklahoma. And I remember them being in other states as well. Remember these chairs? These were um, what everybody kind of laid out on if they didn't want to lay out on a towel. They would kind of click all the way forward, click, 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 and then you could snap it out flat like how this is. But if you didn't get your way out of there, if, if, if your leg out of there, if you were sitting in there, you could get pinched in that little area right there where it's clicking and opening, that little joint right there in the middle, and it could tear out your skin like a, like a bear bite. 99 cent two liter coca-colas and and you got to remember this was not a cheap store to shop at so maybe they were 99 cents here but at the grocery store maybe they were 69 cents or 79 cents eckerd's was all about convenience so it was high two dollars and 99 cents for a roll of film was actually kind of high but we don't even buy film anymore got different products in here Got makeup, oil of LA. Right, they're still around, I know. We got different things. Garden gloves and umbrellas. Getting ready for the spring weather and some weather. Here we have uh, suntan lotion. I was hoping it'd say the SPF. They kind of got it covered up. But here's one. SPF 4. So I'm wondering if that's even like SPF 10. In the 80s, we didn't care about that stuff. We just got burnt. We didn't care. So it wasn't something we were really concerned about. How about this? Forget your Apple Watch. What, what about one of these cool little digital watches? Everybody had those earlier in the 80s. Two for five dollars. Or back when you had an alarm clock rather than your cell phone, three dollars and ninety-nine cents. 
But there was also this option, the digital one, that had the wonderful alarms. And this is a cassette player. I almost thought that was a flip phone for a second. We got touch tone push button phones there. Uh, we got the radios. That would have been a pretty good one. It's a GPX brand, but it would have been a pretty good one to have. We can buy cassette tapes uh, for audio and for video and some movies. We have a 35 millimeter camera for $99.95, Polaroid film for $8.79, and we can get reprints on our pictures right here for 19 cents each. Um, pretty crazy to think about that. It's just stuff we don't do anymore. Remember the dust busters? These old vacuum cleaners here. We never had one. I guess it's kind of a luxury or something, but for whatever reason, we never had one. But I remember a lot of people having them. These old crimpers, back when ladies would crimp their hair. I, I definitely remember that in the 80s. That was huge. We got some more cassette players and headphones. Pretty cool to see an old Eckerd's ad, though. We don't see stuff like that anymore. Eckerd's is long gone. I mean, the buildings are still here, but they've turned into like CVS or some of them are thrift stores in certain places. How about this? Arby's, a sandwich sensation. Looks good. I mean, the color on all this stuff is still good. This newspaper was kept inside. Two roast beef regular sandwiches, $2.22. Or you could get an RBQ. Boy, I remember those RBQs. I don't think they have those anymore, but 99 cents each. I, I seem to remember liking those RBQs, but I don't, I don't think they have them anymore. I haven't been to Arby's in a while. And now they try to push the curly fries on there. But I remember these, these seeds on the bun, the little poppy seeds. I think they went cheap on that too and stopped doing it. But yeah, you can get regular fries, medium drink, and a Philly beef and Swiss sandwich for $2.99. You just can't do that. Even a slider is like a buck a piece or a little more than a dollar a piece. This is uh, Club Cadet, Cadet Mowers. Are they even around anymore? I mean, everyone's going to the zero turn, so maybe they make that, but when I think of like, well, here's probably an early kind of version of a zero turn, sort of. It's more like a, a lawn mower rather than a tractor mower. But when I think of tractors, I kind of think of like John Deere, Kubota, so I don't even know. Let me know if you, if you know that Club Cadet is still around, let me know. Here's, here's a dinosaur from the past. Radio Shack. Um, there is a Radio Shack that I know of in Oklahoma, and I believe it's in Woodward, Oklahoma. I haven't been in it. I've been past it. It's way up in the northwestern part of the state. I need to go in there and maybe just do a video and see what they have, or if it's just a nameplate on the outside. They still have a few locations. Now, these, these locations were independent of the actual chain. You know, you could buy your own store. So there's still people that are operating stores independently. But I never see cars in front of them when I do see them. But I'd like to go in there and just see, can you still get Radio Shack batteries? What kind of gadgets do you have? When Radio Shack was really prominent in the Oklahoma City area where I live, it was all like mainly cell phones and you know, they had a little bit of laptops, tablets, stuff like that, but they, they really just went under. But I loved Radio Shack because you could buy all kinds of gadgets. Like I remember thinking these robots were the way of the future, that they were going to give you your drinks and, and just serve you as you sat back in your recliner. And um, I guess we kind of got Uber and stuff like that that brings it to your door. But I thought we would have this in the house. And yeah, we have Roombas that vacuum now, so I guess we've kind of gotten there. But I just thought everything was going to be robots. I guess like the cartoon Jetsons. I used to watch that a lot. 13-inch color television. $188. Phone there. $12.95. A pedometer. Your, your cell phone can do this. We have a stereo receiver for $299.95 and a car receiver. It's a cassette tape manual dial with the lever on there, $49.95. Police scanner. 
I remember uh, listening to some of those, thought it was cool, especially when the show Cops was out. My grandfather had one of those and we would watch that stuff, watch the cops and we would listen to the police scanner. Um, I don't know, it was crazy what you could hear on there. Here's a water resistant wall radio. You can mount in your house. Walkie talkies. This is all stuff we just don't use anymore. Big old universal remote with buttons that goes to who knows what. Look at this computer, a Tandy $1,699. Then you buy your printer for $299. It looks like one of those old dot matrix printers. You know, the Oh, my sound effects aren't that good, but that's kind of what it sounded like to me. VCR for $349, or you can get this cheaper one for $279. And a TV antenna for $49.95, unless you want to go with the budget one for $21.95. Crazy to think about some of this stuff. CBs, when they were... Uh, they were probably going down then. 70s and early 80s, I remember CBs being huge, but you could still buy them. People still used them. These are intercoms for your house. Now we just kind of text people in our house or call people on their cell phones. We don't even have really a... A lot of homes, we don't have a main home phone. Um, just kind of roll the dice if there's an emergency, I guess, and they go out. But uh, adding machines... Bike radio with horn. Do you guys remember accessories like that? These bike radios with horns? Those were always cool to add on your bicycle if you're really geeky, nerdy, or whatever. So we've got cassette tapes you can buy. Look at this camera. Just this camera, $899. And now your cell phone can do everything that this can do, and your alarm clock, and your calendar, and Everything like that, or you could get this handheld cellular phone, this brick as we used to call them. We definitely did not have anything like this in my family, but that brick is $799. So look at the two items that your cell phone's replaced right here. There's $800 and $900. That's $1,700 total. And then you don't even want to think about how much it is for minutes. Does it say anywhere? I do not see how much it is minute-wise. You probably had to go in the store and figure it out. But it was not going to be cheap. We've got more coupons here. Gatorade. Man, I... I Okay, I drink a lot of Gatorade. But what I really wanted was the glass bottle. Because um, they were the perfect size. 32 ounces. And yes, I drink out of the garden hose, but what I liked even more when it was super hot out, I'm talking that hot July, hot August, you could get this glass bottle and just use it over and over again. And I'd just fill it up with tap water. Heck, fill it up with garden hose. Who cares? But stick it in the refrigerator. And when you came in, it was so cold and so good. It was like the best water. For some reason, it just felt colder in the glass bottle than any plastic bottle you could buy or... I don't have a Stanley, I'm not on that trend, but um, maybe it's the same. You guys will have to let me know if you did this and you do Stanley now, but Gatorade bottles in the glass, they, they were great. Plastic is just not the same. Uh, give me a good old glass bottle of Gatorade, you know, soda, whatever. But 50 cents off any two Gatorades. Pretty good deal there, especially on the double coupon day. Tide, I mean, there's liquid detergent here, but this is back when more people used this box detergent. And uh, so you could get 35 cents off of three of those. Some things about the NBA. Uh, we have razors there, Wheaties. Who we got on Michael Jordan on the Wheaties box? Glare there, there, but there's a Michael Jordan on the Wheaties box. That would really be something to have. I wish I actually had that. But uh, he was on everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. You remember he had McDonald's items and stuff too. Some uh, Happy Meal type stuff. Not really the best of stuff. Typical stuff we still see here. Just regular coupons though. And we've got uh, Kool-Aid. Talking about the troubles of having kids. I don't think that's ever changed. 
daycare, braces, crying, loud music, chauffeuring, family movies. It's kind of kind of similar lifestyle. Magic middles. Magic middles. Can you guys see that? Man, those things were good right there. Um, if you just wanted a store-bought cookie, if you didn't have anyone to bake you something right then and there, this stuff was good. Chocolate chip cookie and that soft, soft, creamy kind of sort of chocolate in the middle. These things are no longer around as far as I know. Um, I've even featured them in a few videos. So coupon right there. We got to hurry. It expires July 15th, 1989. 35 cents we can save. So th those are definitely long gone. Kibbles and Chunks. We had a dog that... I don't remember if it's kibbles and chunks or kibbles and bits, but there were a couple kinds that were soft in there. And that dog would eat the soft kind and spit out the hard kind. So the only way we could get that dog to eat the hard dog food in this was to put like gravy over it or something or whip up some kind of deal. You could get dresses in these coupon deals. Just $14.95 if you're interested. We could send off. Someone, someone needs to send off for that and see if they still offer it. But here's a cigarette ad. Oh, what's this? Scratch here. Just to see what we save. So we scratch that off. And then we got a dollar fifty off of these three packs of Carlton cigarettes or now 100s. Oh, here's more up here. Scratch and see what we got up here. Oh, this is to let us know that, uh, there's only two milligrams of tar in there and uh, 0.2 milligrams of nicotine. If you want a little bit more nicotine, you go with the Carlton right there. You got 0.3 milligrams of, of the nicotine and three milligrams of tar. That way, if you want to coat your lungs more, you could, you could get those suckers right there. Total cereal. I think they're still around, right? Total cereal. Not real sure. STP. So that was that was big commercials there. What else we got? We got Sears. Man. I looked at this not too long ago because I'm working on another video. And I've covered them before. But Sears is down to about a dozen stores. They've recently finished their... Uh, they're, I, you know, you say finished, but they've recently finished some of their bankruptcy dealings. And so the hope was to kind of sort of pull out of that. And they are in some serious trouble. But back in the day, Sears was everything for your tools, for your paint, uh, different things for your house. They had the uh, tough skin jeans. I remember that if you actually fell off your bike jumping ramps and you tore your knee out of that, you had a serious injury because those things were stiff. I mean, they were really tough. There was a reason why they were called tough skins. Look at the way they're dressed right there in this ad. Totally different. And we got some shoes, leather upper shoes, it says. $15.88 for this pair right here, which is nylon and suede split leather where it would have the leather around there. Or you could get the solid leather for $21.88, $34.88. Now look how much we pay for shoes. It's kind of crazy. Get some dresses for $29.94. Timex watches, $23.96. They probably haven't went up uh, hugely since that time, I guess. Um, we got bras for $2.94. If I don't shop for those... So I don't know. I'm sure that's probably cheap. That's probably maybe if you're lucky a clearance price somewhere at Walmart. Um, let me know if you've got a Sears near you. I'm just curious um, what it's like. How full it is. Is it empty? Are they only operating half of the store? Look at this. A Kenmore refrigerator. That Kenmore, you know, was kind of Sears deal. And um, that's something else that's just battled, obviously, when it was connected with Sears. But... $618 for that refrigerator, and there's a good chance that that refrigerator might still be working in someone's garage. It doesn't have anything fancy. Those are trays of ice, so no ice maker, no water in the door on this particular model or anything. But 
it may still be working. I know my dad has a Montgomery Ward's deep freezer uh, like this right here. This says all frostless though for $444. Now his gets frost in it because it's from the 1960s, but it still works and he has to manually defrost the freezer every once in a while. Just basically open the door, unplug it, let it defrost. We got a camera here, a camcorder for $999. Definitely the 80s is when we were getting into the cordless phones. Right there, we've got an AT&T cordless phone, 94, uh, 97. Super expensive for the time period, but we had one. And remember, these had the extendable uh, radio antennas, and you would end up breaking them because they were aluminum and very weak. Until later on, they kind of came out with the kind of rubberized antenna that wouldn't break. But VCR is $299 still. And um, typewriter that could correct your typing, $139. Look at this television, 25-inch television. Not a big television, but it does have a remote, $499.99. <clears throat> or you could get a computer for $799. Crazy, crazy stuff. Wood grain on the television. That's awesome. Probably speaker over here and a speaker over there, unless there's manual controls. I remember some of these had the flip open deal that kind of hid the controls and maybe the speaker was on one side. Ceiling fans, washer and dryer. Uh, we've got a washer for $368 and a dryer for $288. Cheap, cheap, cheap compared to now. Vacuum for $59.87, the kind that took the bags. Those old kind that took the bags. Box fan, 1983. So that's kind of interesting. I feel like you can still get a box fan at Walmart for around the same price. $17, $21. Really hasn't went up. So that's all still the same. This paint, this Sears paint, as far as what I understand, Sears paint was made by Sherwin-Williams. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems to be what I remember. But Sears paint was really good paint. A lot of people bought their paint there, and they had other things, uh, caulking and other things for your home. The big thing was the craftsman tools, especially the old wrenches and screwdrivers and sockets. They were guaranteed. I do see craftsman. I think maybe it's at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. I know Ace has Ace Hardware has had their uh, tools as well, but I mean Sears used to be the only place where you could get craftsman, as far as I remember and uh, we got some old bicycles here 153 $159.93 treadmill for $399 look at these old school playgrounds you know, the, these were around for a long time and as a kid in the 70s I had these and they were so much fun um I, I don't remember it having this thing on there. It could have. Mine might have been more plain like this with just the swings on there, I guess, and the slide. And they were definitely cheaper then. I mean, this one right here says $99.99. So they were cheaper then. I, I, I'm pretty sure I just had the plain Jane one. Some of these are really nice with a bench that swings back and forth right there. But what I remember most about these, I definitely didn't have any monkey bars on the particular kind that I had. It was just a plain swing. And one I had a slide and another one I didn't have a slide. So I mean, I, I must have really had a basic one, I guess. But I remember going really high on this and swinging and getting it within eyesight of this bar right there. And just thinking, you know, could I go over? I mean, I couldn't, you know, you, you'd kind of go up and then just kind of slam down or whatever. And, You'd hold on for dear life on these swings. And later on, maybe in the 90s or early 2000s, if they still sell them today, they would put a clear coat kind of plastic thing over the chain to protect little kids' hands. But if you were a kid in the 70s and 80s, this chain was going to break at some time and it was going to just cut your fingers right through there. I mean, it just tear the skin right off. And it was just something we dealt with. We didn't think anything about it. We got a new chain, let our fingers heal, maybe even get on there with our fingers like that, just take it easy, and then just get right back on the swing again. So that was one danger of it. Um, this thing sat outside steel and it, it would rust, so you had to 
get tetanus shots for that. The other thing that was fun on these playgrounds that I remember is swinging. And you would swing so hard and so back, especially if there are two people on it, that the front legs of this thing, the front legs would kind of lift up off of the ground and then the whole swing set would slam down. And it was just kind of fun to see how far back we could go. And if we had enough of us on there, because I think I had three swings on there, and we really got going at the same pattern, that same time. And this thing, uh, they didn't stake these things down. So you, you, if you played on this as a, as a kid, you took your own life and injuries at your own risk. But yeah, it was fun. We tumped it over. Lots of fun right there. There wasn't any of this safety stuff when I was on them. These little swings like that where a baby gets strapped in. If there was, I don't remember them. They were, they were much younger than me. A grill for $156.50. And that's a Kenmore grill. So kind of interesting there. I feel like maybe these little sets right here, similar price maybe, $793.83. Maybe the difference is those were made in the U.S. and now they come from somewhere else. Be nice about it. Craftsman mowers. That was definitely a big thing too. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe, maybe Lowe's or something has Craftsman mowers. Um, I think they're the ones that have the brand. Lawn mowers for $168.00. $199 and $277 for the really fancy one that would move on its own. I remember when those systems were like this and it propelled on both wheels and was on the outside and you're going through grass, the grass would get tangled up in that wheel system there that was automatic. So those have changed a lot, but never had one. But I got an old one that someone threw out one time and I was tinkering around with it, trying to fix it and... Uh, Eventually, what would happen is, not that the mower would wear out, or the, even this motor, at least anytime soon, but these gears would actually strip down the wheels. I feel like a tabletop grill is probably about $10 more than that. That's $24.78. They, they held on to that price for quite some time. We got shirts for $14.88, back when people wore a lot of ties. Uh, dress shirts for $8.00. 95 cents ties for five dollars and 88 cents and here they're selling carpet that's what i remember carpet and furniture and mattresses and wallpaper back when you had all the accessories in your bathroom you know you had to have the toothbrush holder uh the soap dish the tissue holder the trash can all out of those like wicker type baskets and there were different colors you could get that's typical kind of 80s and 90s there this if you remember, you probably put decorative soaps in there. You know, the little seashells, little balls, uh, might have been butterflies, birds, whatever, and you cannot touch that soap. Uh, some, some moms were so bad you couldn't even use the tissue in this. It was decoration as well. So we got a Montgomery Wards. Now, Montgomery Wards holds a special place in my heart just because I, I loved going to the store, number one. But uh, my grandmother worked at Montgomery Wards and retired out from Montgomery Wards. They've been gone since 2001. And uh, there's a company that bought the name and is using it as sort of a mail catalog, kind of how they sort of started in a way. But it's not the same company. I mean, there's no physical store locations. And it's not really the same thing. If you remember Montgomery Wards back in the day, they had a really cool electronics section, especially in the 80s and the 90s. Um, but there, there was a lot of things that I got. If I got a Christmas gift from my grandmother and grandfather, it was coming from Montgomery Wards because she got a discount from there. And I used to love looking at the Christmas catalogs in the 70s and 80s and circling what I wanted because I knew that she would get it for me. Uh, but they are long gone. Gitano. Gosh, is Gitano even around anymore? I do remember that being a big deal. We've got furniture here. Take a look at that in a second. There's a junior Gitano there. And we got kind of a kind of a jam style, I would say. Jams were more colorful from what I remember though. Not this black and white thing. But jams were huge in the 80s. They had flowers and kind of surfer type deals. 
Wrangler jeans here, $13.99. I think we saw them for $10.99 in another ad. $7.99 for ties, so they're cheaper on that. Wentworth and Banner for the brands there. Farrah suit. Oh, it's a sport coat for $59.99. Men's underwear, $4.99 for a pack of them. A package of three tees, I guess, $6.99. So yeah, different, definitely different things. Here's some some rings. I forgot about their jewelry department. They definitely had some good jewelry there. That's of course where all my grandmother's jewelry came from because they got a discount. But diamond rings, rubies, whatever, she got it there. Wedding rings, anniversary rings. So yeah, Montgomery Wards, what a blast from the past. And this is just an insert here. Oh, they got their own little lawnmowers here. Well, Murray lawnmowers, but these are mowers from Montgomery Wards, so they do. They got that same bar going across it. You could get a building, portable building, for $199. You definitely can't do that anymore. So, uh, I don't know if my grandparents bought paint there for their house or not. Big old console television, 27-inch. You were living the high life if you had this. This is the big old pieces of furniture. Those big old console televisions. Or if you were really rich, then you had these uh, big screen televisions right here. And uh, look at that price, $2,099. We never had anything like that. We did have one of these, and it was left over from the 70s and still worked throughout the 80s, actually. Computer for $999. We have a, a word processor for $399 down here. Word processor there. Car stereo for $189. I mean, it's just crazy to think about this. Even a 19-inch TV for $299. So we got all these old appliances. And we, you know, we had a Montgomery Wards refrigerator. It came from my grandmother. And uh, all the Montgomery Wards stuff came from my grandmother. We had an old refrigerator uh, that was in this kind of yellow color and it was from the 70s and we kept that thing through the 80s and it wasn't until the 90s that my mom got rid of it and decided that she wanted to upgrade it did not stop working she just wanted an automatic ice maker because that had the trays in it um she had the seals replaced on it but it still worked we sold it in a garage sale i remember so all these appliances, man, you cannot get appliances, whether you're talking a washer and dryer uh, or, or a refrigerator or anything that lasts like what these used to. Your televisions lasted a while, but your appliances really did. Um, when I moved out on my own, uh, I had an old microwave. Um, and the funny thing is my parent, my mom replaced the... Uh, the microwave we had, which was a Montgomery Ward's turn dial microwave that would just ding. And it didn't have the tray that would rotate in it. And somewhere around in the 80s, she decided, I think it was the 80s, that she wanted that tray that rotated. It would have been late 80s. And so I remember I got that one of those old microwaves. Don't remember the brand, but it lasted a long time. Uh, I think I eventually got rid of it because moved in a house where it had a built-in microwave with it. But that's definitely when things were cheaper. Look at the price of tires. So we've got P23575R15s for $74.99. That's the most expensive tire you can buy. But you could get some cheap tires if you had the right car for it. $37 and $39, $33.99 right here. So you could definitely get some cheaper tires. Um, batteries. When's the last time that you've paid $34.99 for a car battery? Of course, they, they have so much more on these cars now. but um, So you need more bigger, powerful batteries. But that's 575 cranking amps. That's not bad. $49.99. Different story uh, today getting a car battery. Because I, I, I've paid... 200 bucks for some of those and 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 not any kind of big fancy car. I'm not driving some Lincoln Navigator or something. I'm talking just like a budget friendly little gas car. Um, Payless Cashways was a hardware store 
And I believe that they were in Texas as well. They were pretty thick here in the Oklahoma City area. And I don't think that they're around anymore. No, because I'm thinking of Fox Lumber. So Payless Cashways is long gone. The building is still there, the location that I'm thinking of, but it's like an Office Max, Office Depots, something like that. Might even be something else now because I know those have had some closings. But this was a good hardware store back in the day prior to Builder Square and definitely before Lowe's and stuff like that. They were bigger than an Ace Hardware and they had everything that you would need for your home, lumber, fencing, whatever. So, uh, you know, lumbers just went up crazy ridiculous. But look at this. You could get a double car garage for $1,299. It's just crazy. Stuff to build a deck. Treated deck board for a uh, six foot long board, 39 cents. Crazy. Crazy to think about the price differences now. But yeah, basically just a hardware store, 69 cent garden tools there. How about a hose for $2.99, a 50 foot hose. My gosh, those things are expensive now. But yeah, here's, a, here's just this women's section that they had in the paper. Different stories in there. Things in there, get your nails done, hair done, swimsuits, different stores that are no longer around. It's advertising Sears carpeting in here, Streets. Streets was a uh, store that was around here for a long time in Oklahoma City. They're long gone. Um, I think they were pretty much just an Oklahoma store. Hobby Lobby's still here. They're from the area. And you had travel uh, and entertainment there. I'm just curious, maybe we'll see something from a house in here. What, what I am missing in here, maybe I skipped over it, is I didn't see the funnies. You can't have a newspaper without the funnies or the comics. Um, what do we got here? An apartment? Apartment rent right here. Um, so a one-bedroom apartment started out at $199 on Northwest 10th in Oklahoma City. There's typical apartments. I mean, here's $145 for an apartment rent, $269. Um, there's different one, different prices, and some of those are luxury, it says, for those prices. So it's just kind of crazy to, to look through some of this. I was trying to see, those are homes for rent, trying to see if we could find the price of a home that is for sale. So here we have a home that's for sale, but no price or addresses. Obviously, they want you to contact the realtor. Um, well, here's a two bedroom and it's a brick home, one car garage. So probably a little older home, but who cares? I mean, a home's a home. A brick home would be nice, but they want $30,000 for that home. I don't know what, how old it was that they don't say right there. Well, here's model homes. So look at this. Model homes right there. And they start at $59,900. Um, not everybody was going to get a new home then, a model home. How about a four-bedroom home? Four bedrooms for $76,900. And it's new with 2,000 2, square foot, a little bit over 2,000 square feet. Four bedroom, $76,900. That's not something you're gonna get today. But anyways, I thought this would be interesting to go through this paper. I have messed it all up. I'm gonna look through it and see if I can find the funnies, but I don't know if I've got the funnies in here or if I skipped over it in one of these sections. So, well, I don't know what the deal is, but I did not see any funny papers, comics, whatever you want to call them. Those were usually the big section. Every day was on the back of the paper and it would just be a one page deal, but this was a multi page deal. I don't know if the family member took it out. I'm sure they couldn't have had a Sunday paper without them, but I looked all through this. Kind of made a mess of the paper here, but it was a lot of fun. It's like a, a reliving the past. I'm going to go back through this paper and just look for key things, old ads, stuff like that. Try to get it back in the order of, of what it was. 
Um, it's definitely a piece of history and some of these things that are dealing with the centennial celebration, which was a huge celebration in 1989. I'm going to go back through and see what I can find and dig up some history and maybe put some of that on the other channel. But there was a centennial celebration for statehood, which this became a state in 1907. So in 2007, they did a centennial celebration, but I don't remember it being as big as what it was in 1989. Everybody was super excited and maybe because it was a hundred years of that by the time it came over to 2007 They weren't quite so excited about it But it was still a big deal But a lot of this is stuff that I'm interested in old history and things like that um, There might be some people in there that I don't know about or just people that I've forgotten about and we can maybe visit their final resting place over on the history happens channel So I'm gonna try to get a little more active on that channel uh, Just to let you guys know We've been, uh, like I said, that newspaper came from a family member and we lost quite a few people, friends and family uh, last year and it was kind of a rough year. So I appreciate you guys sticking with us and I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching and leaving comments. But I want to ask you guys one thing. What was the paper that you read where you grew up and what was your favorite thing about the paper? Was it the coupons, the ads? I mean, was the entertainment section was something we all looked at. Told when the movies were playing at the movie theater. Um, you know, it, it just said various things that were happening around the city, things to do. But what do you remember most about the newspaper and what did you love about it? Um, now you probably, like I said, this Sunday paper was a dollar. I don't even think you can get a daily paper for a dollar fifty. And Sunday paper might be three or four bucks at least. And it is not the same. It's nowhere near as thick. Um, there's ads in there, but they're mixed in kind of the special editions rather than just individual kind of special ads. I remember back then and just flipping through there real quick that Dillard's had a lot of ads in there, but there are also other places in there like Foley's, which is no longer around. Foley's has kind of been absorbed by Macy's. So there's things like that in there and we'll we'll put some of that stuff up in the channel. I do sneak things like that in there because I have a bunch of old advertisements and stuff like that from different years. Um, and if there's ever anything that you don't want or can't use, it's newspapers or things you think I can use in a video or something like that history wise, um, feel free to mail it to me. I've got an address below. So I appreciate any kind of donations of old advertisements, stuff like that. We can use it in the video. And uh, so again, I appreciate you guys all tuning in. My name's Rhett, in case you didn't know. This is not an AI voice. It is very echoey in here. This is my office where I do all the editing, but it is not where I do my normal recording. I have a little recording studio booth and it is not big enough to set up for anything like this, nor is the lighting good enough. So. Kind of just have to wing it with the uh, echo in here. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. And if you like this, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. Let me know what you kind of think about this different thing for the channel here. But always good to see your comments below. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.